Hello, my yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Now, if you remember, a couple days ago, we did our breakfast toast coaster. That's the perfect size for your coffee cup or any glass for that matter, but also makes great play food for the kiddos if they have a play kitchen. Now, today we're going to make this, and this is our fried egg hot pad has a little loop so you can hang it up measures about eight inches across it's not great big but it's the perfect size to set a hot pot on but also I didn't want to make it too big because I wanted it to go along with this in case you want to make this for your kiddos for a play food as well so this is our fried egg pot holder and hot pad super easy to make also has this cute smiley face like the toast does and so it's a friend to go along with our toast <laughs> it's so cute and I just love making these kinds of things because you can make them any time of the year for any occasion someone one of your uh, grandkids or children are getting a new little kitchen set make a couple of these to throw in with it and then they've got breakfast they can make <laughs> Alrighty, now you can find the complete pattern for our egg on my blog, and I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. I'll also put the link for this one there. That way, if you haven't seen that video, you can find it underneath this one as well. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be using this cotton yarn. It is called, I love this cotton in white spark, which is, has a little bit of a sparkle to it. But I wanted a really white white and my other one was an off white and I think it's going to look really cute with the sparkles in it. And then the center I'm using, I love this cotton. It's a little bit different yellow, but it's still very yellow. The color of this one is called banana. And then you'll need a small amount of brown or black or whatever color you want to do the smile. Now, you can use any cotton or even acrylic for this if you want to. If you're making this for play food, acrylic is fine. It just needs to be a medium weight number four yarn, either cotton or acrylic, depending on what you're going to do with it. If you're just going to hang it up in your kitchen and it's going to be decorative, acrylic is fine. If you're making it for play food, acrylic is fine. If you're going to put something hot on this, I really recommend that you use a cotton because acrylic yarns melt and they can really uh, damage your, of course, the hot pad as well as your counter and your hands, okay? Alrighty, so you're gonna need approximately five ounces of your white, maybe two ounces of your yellow and just a small amount of the brown. That's more than you need. It's, it's definitely more than you need. Okay, we're gonna stitch with our H hook, which is a five millimeter crochet hook. You need a needle to weave in ends and to add your face. And of course, you're gonna need a pair of scissors. We're going to start with our yellow because we're going to be starting from the center and then working our way out. All right, so I've got my yellow. I'm gonna make my slip knot. We're going to chain five. And we'll join this chain five into a circle. Put the tail of yarn over your hook and pull that through. And then we'll just tie that stay knot. If you prefer to use the magic circle or another method to make your beginning circle, that's totally fine. All right, so we're going to go in the circle, pull up a loop and chain three. Our chain three counts as one and we're going to make nine more double crochets right in that circle. Alrighty, a little bit of a tangle there. Let's see how many I've made. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So our chain three counts is our first uh, double crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
All right, so we're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch, and we're going to go ahead and chain three. Now, before we go any farther, I like to go ahead and close this up. So I'll just pull on that string, and I'll go ahead and weave this in. Now, you don't have to do this right now. You can do it at the end if you want to. I just like to get it done. Then I don't have to worry about it later. And it's a really easy fix. We're weaving it in and closing up that hole at the same time because we stitched our stitches over that tail of yarn. All right, we'll clip that. And so for round one, we have 10 double crochets joined to the chain three and chain three. For round two, our chain three counts as our first double crochet. We're going to double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three. Now we're going to stitch two double crochets in each of those double crochets around. So for round one, we had 10 double crochets and round two will have 20. Two double crochets in each of our double crochets around. And we'll join back to our chain three. I stitched two double crochets in each of my double crochets around. So on round two, I have 20 double crochets. Now I've already cut my yarn because we're going to be bringing in our white. We need to join to the chain three with a slip stitch and then we'll bring in our white. We've done the yellow of our egg, and now we're going to do the white portion. All right, and it's real important. Oops, I don't want to pull that string too much. It's real important that we do our chain three after our color change, because this chain three counts as our first double crochet on round three. And so now we're going to go right in that same stitch as our chain three and stitch a double crochet. <clears throat> And now we're going to go in the next double crochet and stitch two double crochets. And so basically for round three, we're repeating what we did on round two. Two double crochets in each of the double crochets around. One in two. And we'll repeat this all the way around and join back to our chain three. I brought my mat out so to make it easier for you to see when I'm working with the white yarn. All right, so two double crochets in each of our stitches around. So that gave us 40 double crochets for round three. We're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. <clears throat> now what we're going to do for round four, we're going to stitch one double crochet in the next two stitches. And then we'll stitch two double crochets in the next. One and two. All right. Our chain three counted as our first, then we stitched one in the next two, and then two in the next. And so what our repeat is for round four is one double crochet in the next three. One, two, three, and then two double crochets in the next. One and two. So we're doing what I call three and two one double crochet in the next three, and two in the next. One, two, three, one double crochet in the next three, and then two double crochets in the next double crochet. <clears throat> and we'll repeat this working all the way around our egg. <laughs> All right. 
Alrighty, so we'll repeat this around and join back to our chain three. I have completed row four, and on row four we have 50 double crochets. I join to my chain three with a slip stitch and we're going to chain three. Now for row five, it's similar. <clears throat> Here's our chain three. We're going to double crochet in the next three and that will give us four double crochets, one in each of the next three because our chain three counts as our first and then we stitched one in each of the next three. So that makes four double crochets and then two in the next. One and two. All right, and so our repeat for row five is one double crochet in the next four double crochet stitches. And then two double crochets in the next. I call this doing four and two. It's not a technical term. It just helps me remember what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> One, two, three, four, and then two double crochets in the next double crochet stitch. And we'll continue to repeat that four and two all the way around and again join back to our chain three. I have completed round five and for round five you should have 60 double crochets. I join to my chain three and I'm only going to chain one. And this chain one does not count as a stitch, it's just a joining chain. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to stitch one single crochet in the first 11 stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. In our next stitch, our next double crochet, we're going to stitch two double crochets. One and two. <clears throat> so we stitched eleven single crochets and two double crochets. Now we're going to repeat that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Then in the next stitch, we're going to stitch two double crochets. <clears throat> One and two. All right, and then we'll repeat this on around, stitching 11 and then two in the next. And then our last stitch over here will be two double crochets and then we'll join to that first single crochet. I have completed round six and you can see by putting those double crochets, it gives us sort of the shape of what the egg is. I noticed my yarn had a little bit of black here, so I think I might have burnt my egg a little bit. <laughs> it's okay with me. <laughs> All right, we have one more row to do. <clears throat> we joined to our first single crochet and chained one. So we're going to single crochet in the first 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then that twelfth stitch is that first double crochet. Okay, 
<clears throat> now that brings us to the second double crochet of those two and we're going to stitch two single crochets in that 12th stitch all right that ends up being the 13th stitch because we did 12 single crochets and then two single crochets in that second of the two double crochets all right and so we'll do that again one single crochet in the next 12 one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and then one single crochet in that 12th stitch which is the first double crochet of the two and then in that second double crochet of the two we're going to stitch two single crochets all right <clears throat> and that's how we get a little bit more of a rounded edge on those little points that give us sort of our misshapen egg all right so 12 single crochets then two single crochets in the next and repeat around all right i have completed round seven we did 12 single crochets two single crochets in the next and repeat so now i'm going to join back to my first single crochet <clears throat> and what we're going to do here is we're going to chain 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 <clears throat> then we'll go right back in that same stitch join with the slip stitch and that gives us a loop so we can hang up our egg if we want to if you're doing this for play food and you don't want to put that loop on there you don't have to you can just tie off <clears throat> I like the idea of hanging it up I think it's fun all right so now I'm going to pull that to the back so we can tie that off to the back but that's the way our fried egg looks okay I have a couple of ends to weave in so I'm going to grab my needle and get this egg all tidied up so I've weaved in my ends it's all tidied up on the back <clears throat> now if you want a thicker hot pad you can make two and put them together and do that last row stitching the two of them together and that's even true of the piece of toast if you want it thicker make two then do that last row stitching them together and that's true of any hot pad or coaster if you want it thicker all right so I want to add that little smiley face so I've got some brown yarn here cotton again I've put it on my needle and we're going to follow this line right here and make the smile and then we'll make the eyes I want you to see how we did that on here we followed that line and then we made the two eyes okay now what I like to do I don't want this to be right on the top I want it to kind of be over just a smidge <clears throat> that way when I hang it up it looks pretty cute now when you're adding stitches onto crochet or knit you need to make sure you go in a stitch and not the hole in between or you will lose that stitch okay it'll fall in between all right so I'm going to go and make the mouth like this and of course the size of the smile is up to you and how you want it to sit okay so I just did three stitches now I'm going to do a fourth to make the mouth all right now you'll see he's gonna sit just a little bit over not quite even with this loop I just like doing it that way all right and I want to make sure that the mouth's thick enough so I'm going to come back through and just go over those stitches alright so now I've got a little smile and I want to line the eyes up <clears throat> and I make the eyes I didn't do French knots on this because just in case we're going to use it as a hot pad 
um, the French knots kind of mess with how it sets, but you can do French knots if you want to. I just prefer to do an up and down straight stitch. So I'm going to go in the stitch and I'm just going to make a loop, making sure I'm going through stitches. And then I'll come over here to this stitch and I'll do that again, going through stitches. So now I have a smiley face on the front. I do need a little weaving in to do. And I'm just going to come over this way and weave this in behind. Now, when you're doing a color like this, you don't want it to show through on the front. <clears throat> you're going to be very careful and just weave in between the stitches, not going through on the front. See how I pulled that through and you won't be able to see it on the front because you don't want an extra blurb of brown on there that shows through that looks like, you know, it's got a speck of dust on his face or something. Okay, so I'll cut that one off and then I'll do the same thing with this one. And if you're worried about uh, the stitches being on the back and being messy, like I said, you can always do two eggs, put the face on first and then stitch two of them together. Alrighty. Now my happy little egg is all done. He's kind of a sunny side up little egg, isn't he? <laughs> so here's the one we did today. Here's the one I did the other day. This one is made with peaches and cream or um sugar and cream type cottons that are a little bit rougher. This one is made with I love this cotton and it's a little bit softer. And again, you can use any cotton or any acrylic or any yarn that you have on hand if you're going to use this as play. Just make sure it is a medium weight number four yarn. And then of course now we have breakfast. <laughs> huh, I think we need some bacon.